Hello, guys, and welcome back to the Raspberry Podcast. Today, I am joined by Arlen Sakera. Arlen is literally as old school as it gets when it comes to UK Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He is the first person to ever teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in the UK. Uh, that was in 1996. So he's been over here teaching Jiu-Jitsu for 21 years. It was an absolute pleasure to be able to get him on the, and, and, and to chat to me today. A uh, really, really enjoyable. He is incredibly passionate, super high energy. I think I had a smile on my face the entire time. Uh, so really, really a great conversation. If you want to watch this episode as well as listen to it, then you can check it out on my YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com forward slash raspberry ape. You can check it out here. Otherwise, I really, really enjoyed this and I hope you guys enjoy listening. Check it out. So first, Islands, I want to say thank you very much for coming and joining me. How you been? I've been very well. Thank you very much for inviting me. No, absolute pleasure, man. You know, we, we were we were kind of having this discussion, which is uh, we believe that you are the first person to ever teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Absolutely. in the UK. Yes, um, I arrived here in 1996. We didn't have no Jiu-Jitsu here yet. So I have only one person. His name was Shane. And... Uh, I came in Shane actually I think he's not here anymore. He moved to Spain. Yeah, he's in Spain. Right, Spain yeah. now, right? Then uh, I started my first school in Tottenham in Santa uh, Green Cross Green Lanes, North mm -hmm. London. That was my first school I started teaching there. I came here in 1996. I was I wasn't even brown belt yet. Wow. I was like a purple belt, four stripes, only twenty three years old. Yeah. And uh, because no jiu-jitsu here, I was, uh, they want to try to start some things new here. My teacher just hand gave me him the brown belt here. Even living here, I was living here in the UK. And uh, he's in Brazil. Okay, I'll just hold the, the brown for the moment until uh, try to make uh, some thinking for the jiu-jitsu there in the UK. Yeah. So, so you know, we're going to come back to that, but let's rewind back into Brazil. So how did you get into Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Well, there's a long story. Where, we got time. Don't worry about <laughs> it. We got plenty of time. <laughs> I started teaching, I started learning judo when I was 12 years old because uh, there's no jiu-jitsu in my area. In jiu-jitsu was a very much a karaoke sport. Sure. That's for guys in Rio. That's right, the Grace family. Yeah. But we used to have a certain situation that called no Grace Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Sometimes in particular places. And this particular place was for poor people, for the poor community. Mm. It's to train Jiu Jitsu. At least because I'm not Carioca, I'm from Minas Gerais, another part of the. It's the next, uh, next town across. Town across. Yeah. And uh, the Jiu Jitsu was very much. Uh, uh, for the poor people, take the poor people from the trouble, from the the to to try to improve their lives. Mm. Okay, and when I was teaching, I was learning judo. Sometimes the judo people used to have a competition with the jiu jitsu people. Okay, so then you know, I start to get that's a great sport. Yeah. These guys get the others in the floor and and get tapped so quickly. You so know? so what what was the rule set that they were doing? Was it just they just go or they, they go to judo set, but they 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 ju when you go to the ground you increase the time. Okay, <laughs> right. How how long would they do? Oh, uh, I don't remember now. But Too long. Uh, yes, <laughs> but we was catching everybody, so I, was, I got fascinated about this sport. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know what's a jujitsu before. I was I was only a kid, I was twelve years old. H had you had you heard of Brazil like? Well, I guess it wasn't called Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil, but it was Gracie Jiu-Jitsu in no, Brazil. No, it's so called Jiu-Jitsu. Just Jiu-Jitsu. Just Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. And uh, but we, I knew about it and the the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu from Rio de Janeiro. Mm. We knew about it, but we didn't have. A you heard about the Gracie family? Absolutely. Yeah, they, they were they famous. Was, they was a phenomenal. You yeah. know, who didn't know them? Really? They, they was, you know, they fight the MMA. Everybody was absolutely fascinated about them. Yeah. And to be honest, they, they have the best jiu-jitsu in Brazil. It doesn't matter how Brazilian jiu-jitsu say Brazilian jiu-jitsu. No grace jiu-jitsu won everything for the family. Yeah. How the jiu-jitsu in Brazil won any, everything for the family. Because they did everything for the jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Not just for them, but the but for the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Mm. We're never going to be here today if they did make effort to put the ass there mm. and fight and marketing and uh, and uh, make all the effort they did, all these years. Well, that's like something that I think that we don't think about a lot, which yes. was as, as well as the Gracie family being great martial artists, that actually they were great 
business people. They were great yes. marketers, weren't they? You know that that that's something that actually you don't really clever. think about. You very know, they, they they put adverts out. They had they you know Horian was part of the first UFC, that's and when they went to America, they were doing challenge matches, and actually all of that was to do with the marketing and getting the name and the branding out there. And a lot, I think a lot of people don't realize that actually, as well as being martial arts geniuses, they were kind of branding and marketing Absolutely. geniuses as well. Yeah, it was amazing in the in the ever aspect and and the, we we they, they, we I decided as well to, I stopped a little bit training judo at the time so I grew up because of college school you know I was I had a luck enough that you had a very good education my father could afford it and uh, I start doing back now I don't do judo anymore uh, I want to go straight away for the jujitsu. So how? when when you came out of uh, university, you you decided you were going to get back in the martial arts and you wanted well, to go. Well, I to... was I was on the process to go to university okay. because I'm in, I'm a mechanical engineer. That's my degree, and uh, but the time it was before how we should do. We call the A level. Is it A levels? Yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was doing the A levels, and my friend, look. What do you think we start doing some jiu-jitsu? For Why we don't have jiu-jitsu here? We have to go all the way to far away. A one-hour drive here to get, you know, the time was um, uh, Red Belt. Uh-huh. Now he is now called Master Hilton. And uh, um, we had a, a guy there, Black Belt. is really tough. He's a, and we brought him to the south. Right? It's a rich area. Mm. We, call, we have a poor area, rich area. The Brazil, it's very difficult to understand. You guys understand here in England. Yeah, people don't realize how uh, split the... Sort yeah, of, absolutely split. Yeah. Into, and the middle, the middle uh, class is, is little. Yeah. But we have the rich and the poor. Yeah. And we, if you want to go to the jiu-jitsu... You have to go all the way to the poor area because there is the greatest jiu-jitsu in the area we had at the time. Sure. So it's an amazing thing to think because no one knows what's going on before. Like for for someone outside of yeah. Brazil, they don't understand. They can't get their head around that sort of yes. divisiveness in the in the mm-hmm. s- society. So yeah. we decided to go there, pick up the best black belt at the time. It was uh, oh, now today is my time. Loyal to him until today. Wow. Nineteen ninety-one, you put him in the south, I mean in the south of Belo Horizonte. Uh, and then the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu start there, very very strong. Mm. But wow, everybody start want to learn there. So me and my friend, it's another Cause thing because this, this is still before the UFC ever happened. Oh, this was a good three four years before. Because I I think that like a uh, UFC one is almost like a uh, is almost like like zero BC. Yes. You know, like that's the date that. That, that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu got introduced to the world, Absolutely. and that everything before that was kind of yeah. before the UFC. It was yeah. like another era, and right. then you have after the UFC, which was everything else. So this was all happening before. Oh my word! You don't have a clue how big it went when the Royce Grace started going to UFC and uh, Hickson Grace in Pride. Yeah. Oh, the Jiu Jitsu arriving level where. Everybody wants to do it. Yeah. You know, Royce Grace so he arrived there. What he did was something people people don't understand. Mm. Never could understand what is happening, you know? And even myself I was like, wow, I'm a big fan of this guy. <laughs> yeah. I was only a kid, I was only my 19 years old at the time, you know. Uh, you, you've been doing jiu-jitsu for a couple of for a few no, years. I start point. 19 one series, 91. Yeah. Uh then I came here was I when I came in, in London. 96 so um it's good five years training okay so you're you're a purple belt at the time it was purple belt at the time jumped for for brown belt yeah and what, was it was like a training like a twice a day yeah every day six seven days a week wow we had absolutely crazy and a massive team there at the time because it was only one academy to teach in jiu-jitsu at the time then the first grace arrived there in 1993, 1994, Draculin arrived there. Okay. I into into your was, town? Yes. It was the first Grace Academy there, Draculin from Grace Bar. Yeah. And I remember him uh, training him as well for for good one month. Then uh went back to Robert Ferreira, but it was just a, a little trial. He's a great guy, very technical. Draculin? Jacu- Jacu- yeah, yeah, he's very a great good, guy. Yeah. Very, very good, you know. But you know, I'm a very, I'm a kind of very loyal person. Sure. Then um, uh, I think loyalty comes with the heart. Yeah. For everybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know that, that's a really, a, really. I, I've never <laughs> ever heard someone say that, but I think that's a really, like, 
that attribute of loyalty is something that's yes. so you either have it or you don't have it. That's right. You, yeah. you loyal to your family, loyal to your wife, you loyal to <laughs> you loyal to everyone. You have to be loyal. Is is up to you. I think yeah, is is and I respect if you're not loyal because you you want to achieve different ways to yeah to go through to your, your ambition, mm. right? But I'm the kind of person. Uh, loyalty is very important to me, and and I've been with him, my teacher for for a long time, over 25 years now. Wow. Yeah, we like I don't even teach and and shoot anymore. It's, it's just brothers now. It's, yeah. it's so many years. Now. It's like a, you, you, Nicky Brooks, 12 years. You, yeah. you, you, brothers now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Th that's why I say jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu is such a wonderful uh, weapon because it's not just a sport, right? It's not like uh, you go to a volleyball or basketball and no. they see you. I'm never going to see you again. Yeah. You get black belt and you see you going back to the same place where you learn. It's like your home. Yeah. You're gonna see these people for the next 20, 30 years. Yeah. It's not your it's not your friends, but it's your brothers. Yeah. People don't realize that you just a way of living. Yeah. Okay? You know, you you know, I live in England here now for 21 years. If I go back to Brazil, I see all oh, these bastards there. <laughs> they still won't take my arm off. <laughs> you know, but they are they are all my brothers, yeah. you know? You see people this is I started blue belt, white belt, now all black belts, now all white bead in the chin. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I arrived there. It's all good friends. Yeah. It's all brotherhood, you know. Oh, give me a big hug, you know. When are you gonna see this another sport? You don't see this another sport then. What what do you what do you think it is about jujitsu that creates that sort of camaraderie? Because it tell, absolutely it happens. I'll tell you one thing is the most important is is a way of living. It's not but to me. That's why I believe what you see is. It's a way of living. Yeah. Okay. Is uh First of all, the great thing is about it is you never learn, you never stop learning, never. It's like a be made scene. It's like a, a, a IT. Just keep it going, keep it mm. going. Keep, my God, look at this modern jujitsu of bedding ball, mm. toe holes and heel hooks and no gi. Like yourself as you always, absolute talent, young man, isn't it? <laughs> so no gi now. Is it the time or the time when they start? Do you have nothing? This yeah. we should check. You know how we should check new techniques. So go copy a tissues. Yeah. Check your people. Oh, look, look. I have seen what he done. Why? Did you see this? There are three people watching. Yeah. And we see this guy, what he did in the copy tissues to learn some things new. But now we have so much access now. We have uh, the YouTube at the time when I used to learn jiu-jitsu. I used to learn by the copy tissues. That's why I used to do copy tissues every two, two weeks. My mm -hmm. teacher, now we have to go copy tissues. have to go copy tissues. Force us to do go copy tissues. To have your ability to share information. For they learn and we learn mm. between us because it was very much different from now. A little bit more political. We shouldn't. We should it never. is now. No, no. Before it's much more. Yeah, when you were in Brazil. Yes, because you was allowed to train in another academy before. Yeah. Today, I think the door is much better now. It's open. I, I, I think it. it people, some people still have the old school mentality. Yes. Where you don't train outside of your own gym. And I think some people have, they refer to it as a more progressive, yeah. modern yeah. outlook on jiu-jitsu. Uh, you know, a, a great example is something like Gracie Baja, I think still have a lot of the old um, yes. the old attitudes where they don't want people coming in for seminars that aren't Gracie Baja. And when they go to other places, they'll train at the Gracie Baja places in other yes. areas um, compared to say like BJJ Globetrotters, which is the opposite, which is you train yes. everywhere. Uh, and you can train here for free if you let other people train for free. And it's, it's, uh, yeah, I'm you know, but, but at the same time, I think that it's nice in a way. I think that for some people, they want that old school mentality. They want to feel like they're part of a closed group yes. and other people want to feel like they're part of the wider audience of jujitsu. So I, I, yes. I think having the option to do both is, is one of the nice things about yeah, it. Yeah. I, I, I think he, everybody have a different way to teach in the, I, I respect uh, every uh, opinion about the subject, but uh, my opinion is uh, we are one community. Yeah, and it's very special community. I don't think we should do, think about flags or barriers to stop anybody to teach, to learn anywhere from any how. Um, a loyal be loyal is important. I said my to be loyal to me is important, very important. But uh, you're allowed to train whatever you want to train. Mm. You know, I have a, you know, last last example, last uh, Sunday, 
my brown belt, you met him, uh, Thomas Banduras, he trained Nick Brooks. Yeah. Was, I, I was asking, how was? Yeah. It was a train, uh, Nick Brooks' uh, competition train there. It was yeah, great. Yeah. I heard it was great, you yeah. know? And uh, these things uh, motivate me more. We are one community. And this community is all you pass a positivity. Everybody, because you are a healthy nation here, a healthy community. Mm. And we have a very important tool here. People don't realize this sport is a growing sport in the whole entire planet right now. It's, name it, name it, anything you grow more than you just now. You don't have, mm. right? You talk about any other sport. We are number one growing sport in the planet. Every day you take over more and more and more. And what I think uh, jiu-jitsu is, uh, is a martial art involved with a lot of respect. And, and uh, you need to use that to put all the community together. Imagine every single person training jiu-jitsu in a planet. Yeah. It's a better planet. Yeah. Do you agree with me? Look, yeah. you, you, look at our martial arts. You hide someone every day. You hug. That's what you do. You hug each other. <laughs> right? Okay, let me take your arm a little bit here, but we still hug, right? Yeah. That, that's the main thing. We share energy. Yeah. The, this energy we share is great. And uh, it, it's sharing, info, it's sharing uh, techniques as well. It's about sharing and hug and uh, always be positive. You know, coming, ah, I have a little bit stressed today. Oh, my wife drove me mad. Do you know what? I'm going to train jujitsu. Yeah. After training, you arrive home. Hello, my love. <laughs> <laughs> Correct? Yeah. To release everything. Now, is to me, to me, is not just a sport, is is a medicine as well. Yeah. It's a therapeutic. Yeah, yeah, I definitely yeah, think so. Yeah. You know, th there's so many aspects. And you were saying uh, if everyone on the planet trained jiu-jitsu, the world would be a better place. And I think that's the mentality that they had in the uh, in the UAE, out yes. in Abu Dhabi, where um, one of the sheikhs had his kids train jiu-jitsu and they saw the difference they had made to them. And then that's why they brought in this program to teach every single kid in the schools jiu-jitsu because they could tell how good it would be for the next generation to kind of have that sport as part of their life. Yes. But I think there's so many, there's so many aspects of jiu-jitsu that make sense for it to kind of, you know, improve, you know, like you said, what is it about jiu-jitsu that, that has that antidepressive or that energy, uh, increase in effect and it's obviously it's exercise it's sport there's the, the like you said you're hugging each other that's right there's a lot to be said to that to like how disconnected the uh, an average person is from other people you know if you don't have a girlfriend or, or boyfriend or whatever if you don't have a family that you that you know some families aren't touching each other maybe you, maybe you shake a few people's hands but then you go to the jiu-jitsu academy and you have people you know you go and say hello to each other you give each other a hug you're wrestling on the floor with each other the whole time i think that human connectedness physical connectiveness is a huge part of what we've lost possibly as a society and i think jiu-jitsu starts to reconnect that in a physical and also in a yes. kind of for some people a spiritual way as well that's right, yeah. absolutely. So, you got everything now. Yeah. <laughs> you are English gentleman, that's right. Isn't it? You try to read, read my mind. <laughs> well done. Uh, and uh, you, you know, is is before I came to England, um, everybody was saying, oh, they, they are very cold weather there. I was are you sure you want to go there? Because my, my sister lives in America, and she's like, my sister saying, are you, are you sure they are very cold people? For cold people? Oh, I saw Jiu-Jitsu gonna make the warm yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you can't see, you know, I don't see much cold in the dojo. Everybody nah. chatting, laughing, happy. And I think that is the spirit now. You, yeah, you, I think a Jiu-Jitsu Academy is a nice place to be always. Absolutely. You know? yes, yeah. yes. So God, let, let, let's talk about you coming to the UK. What brought you from Brazil over to England? Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit, it's not a very happy uh, way to say, but I have a twin brother. And he, when Wendo was 23, he died car crash. And I was very, very disturbed at the time. And my father said, all right, Alan, show, tell me what part in the planet you want to live. And I have a two friends, good friends, they were studying English here. So I came, I came for just forget a little bit, just yeah. three months, forget what happened to my brother. But I, I met my wife, isn't it? A Jewish lady, isn't it? <laughs> in Stanford, you, I met her. Yeah. In, in a supermarket. Yeah. In the biscuit session. 
Hey, we're still with her now. We are together for 22 years. Wow. Fall in love. Wow. Now, now I stay here. But uh, when they came, uh, they have a no jujitsu. So, so uh, the time I started, you know, could even speak English. But I still not speak English properly now. But I'm trying my best, you know. Yeah. But I was my first job was I was working in scaffold. I was scaffold my first three years here before I got to banking. So I was a JP Morgan for 12 years as well. Wow. But I was. Uh, Uh, so that just extra money. I want to put is a little bit jujitsu to put it extra money in the evening. But it was booming there. When I opened in the first week, in the second month, I had about 30 students there. So this this was in 1996. This was just when Royce Grace, of course, finished the fight. And there was, you know, everybody wants to do it. Everyone knew that there was Brazilian jujitsu, like. It yes. got exposed to the martial arts yes. community, but there was absolutely not a single person in the UK who was doing it. Yes. And that, like, it's it's that's mind blowing yes. for for people doing jujitsu now. Imagine knowing what Brazilian jujitsu is, yes, and there wasn't a single place to do it in the entire country, yes. It's, and that was only twenty one years ago that that was happening. It uh, wasn't even a thousand years ago. Uh, no, you know? it's amazing how big he is now. Yeah, he's just absolutely crazy. So I. I start teaching there. They have one of my shoes. They said to me, Alice, have a hands of grace seminar in Bamia. Oh, all right. So I bought your ticket. So let's go. So, oh, all right, let's go. So we arrived there. Who was there? Imagine. Imagine who was there. I met Mauricio Gomes there. Yeah. <laughs> so it was the first time I met Mauricio Gomes. And I feel the first time he's did, knee, did, did you know my who, chest. Did you know who he was? <laughs> huh? No, I didn't know who he was. Yeah. But it was a very friendly, and it's he did he did the neon belly. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, I, I had just a thing in my my should have I just think in my head. I, I'm was very I'm very flexible. Yeah, and I was very skinny as well. I had the well, well I'm I'm nearly ninety kilos now, but the time it was eighty. Yeah, but, but because I'm a tall guy, eighty eighty three. Yeah. I have just thinking in my head. No one passed my guard. You know, you you like have I just passion for the God. Yeah. I want to learn everything for the God. No. Someone passed my God. I was like, ah, oh, two days, no sleepy. And what did I do wrong? You know? When I came Mauricio Gomes, it was just, boop, boop. Yeah. Just passed my God, put it in my bed. I was like, ah! <laughs> what? what? I know. I have to learn to use this guy. Yeah. So then we start training a little bit there, a little bit here. So you would travel up to Birmingham uh, to train? No, no. He we start teaching in London. Yeah. Basically teaching one of the first class he teach in my, in my academy at the time. Then he start teaching in a place in Leicester Square. Yeah. Then I start to go there sometimes when I could because then I have to stop teaching. The time that I found a job and I, te- I stopped teaching, we stopped training Jiu-Jitsu when... For four years because I was very busy in my new job. I was in JP Morgan for uh, in facilities there for 12 years, yeah. 13 years. Yeah, that was it when they start my job there. And uh, I have to stop for three years, but sometimes you should go there to train with him once a month, yeah. twice a month before he set up. Then in the end, Roger came, Roger was just purple belt at the time, yeah. I remember, and uh. You trained with him when he was a purple belt? No, I didn't train. Yeah. Much. I trained with Mauricio Gomes. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> nice man. Now he's a legend, isn't it? Well, there you go. If I knew he's going to be this legend. <laughs> you try and tap him out. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say that. Like, yeah, I, tap, I tapped up Roger and they say, how long ago? It doesn't matter how long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, there's so many questions when you start talking about because it's, it's kind of so just weird to even think that the first person teaching jiu-jitsu or how long ago that was uh it wasn't that long ago but kind of in the history of the uk jiu-jitsu that was the very beginning like do you have any students from back in 96 who carried on training till today yes no carry on training yes all black belts now you know different organizations now yeah because i stopped i stopped teaching sure so so when you stopped teaching they 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 obviously wanted to carry on so they must have gone around to to, 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 different, to different people. Yeah, Roger Graces went, they went to different academies, probably, you know, in six different academies, yeah. like belts there. I met, sometimes I meet some few in competitions, like, uh, you know, in the same, oh, remember me? I thought, 
know much, but I said, yes, I remember yeah. you. <laughs> so, so <laughs> it's all black belts now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, so you started teaching back again. Oh. Right. When I went back to teach, it was uh, Edmonton, you know. Yeah. Prince Edmonton. I have this guy, um, Asian guy. He's just, he's, his name's Abidu, very good friend of mine. He used to uh, train in America. So he was only a white belt. He, was, he used to train for me in my first academy as yeah. well. So we started teaching. He, start, he set up academy in Edmonton and have a, another person that teaching now. Uh, not instructed there, but he left. He had to go back to America. So when he went back to America, my God, I don't have teacher here anymore. I have so many students here. I don't have teacher anymore. So how are we going to look for a guy to go back to teacher? He starts thinking. I'm going to try to ask Alan, my original teacher. And uh, he rang me. He found me. I don't know how he <laughs> rang me. And he said, I think Facebook is a great thing about it. You yeah. can find people. You can find anyone now. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. <laughs> don't be a criminal. I'll put your name on Facebook. <laughs> you find you. <laughs> so what happened there? And uh, I start teaching now again. Look, I'm very busy. I'm very busy. I'm yeah. very busy. I can't. You know, I don't know if I have a time, but this was like a trigger a little bit because imagine a guy, yes, have absolutely a passion for jiu-jitsu and stop training. Mm. Was a bit frustrated at the time in my life because I was thinking about jiu-jitsu, I swear my life, I was thinking about jiu-jitsu every day, mm. nearly every day. For that four, must be hard. It's hard, yeah. but I have so much going on in my life. Like, yeah. you, you have know, to prioritize sometimes. You know, if I have my baby born and I have a new job, I have abuse up my ass, you know, and everything's have to. I have, I have a responsibility. It's yeah. a little bit more serious than you use the time. Yeah. But when it rang, was exactly the time where I was more stable. Things, things was a much, much better. Then I had a, another purple belt. Good friend of mine just moved to England from my academy, and I know he sees a kid, he's a babe, whatever it is, because he's much younger than me now. And um, Mateus, I have a bit. Can you start a teacher there? Because I can do now, but uh, maybe I can pop it there once, once a week. That's him. I, I went the first time there, put my gear, took the dust from my gear, you know, yeah. the old gear. I never could stop again. That's it. I said, Lorraine, I can't stop. Say, you know, said my wife, and I can't, I have, to, I have to go back. I have to go back training, you know. She, she said, yeah, go, 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 Alan, you do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, I never stop again. Now I've been, now I've been Edmonton, now close. I mean, I'm in all over the place. I have a, I'm in Fellop Station. Now it's a close to Gantz Hill. Yeah. And now it's a nine academies. I'm looking after nine academies wow. under my name now. If you are asking, it just happens. Yeah. You know, it just this is crazy. I think I think I don't I don't market it too much. You know, mm -hmm. a little bit in Facebook and be joking on Facebook. I do I do like that. But I think the most important is not even my teaching, I think it's the attitude. Yeah. People like the attitude. Because when you're delivering a, a coach in a teaching level, you don't just have to teach a technique, but you have to be Give a lot of attention for most important is give a lot of attention for the beginners because they have to feel they've been taken care. Yeah. At once they leave. A lot of academies in today, in 10 academies, they go white belts. If you don't give the attention, it's enough attention. They don't feel special. They will leave. You give it two weeks, three weeks, leave. The most important now, the beginners give you a lot of attention. And the positivity put it up all the time. And this is so important to give them something for keeping them going. And as I always say to them, keep it to down, please don't give up before three months. Yeah. It's gonna be very confusing in the beginning. Yes. You're not gonna understand nothing. But three months, hold with me for three months. Then after three months, if you want to leave, leave. Mm -hmm. Right? I say to you, look, if you can't afford, I I don't know. I pay your, your training, but I need you here for three months because mm. I know. Mm. I know three months is addicted. Yeah. <laughs> He's a trick. It's a, a jujitsu addiction, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I think once I, get, a... <laughs> once I get past that confused state, because yeah. it is. You know, I think uh, 
for so many people i see them come in and they want to do and they're enthusiastic about starting the martial art but they start rolling and it's just i don't know what i'm doing i I don't know what to do i I just have no idea and it it must just feel and it's so long ago for you and it's even so long ago for me that i almost don't remember what it was like to to know nothing yes uh but it must just be like being thrown in in the ocean and be drowning you have no idea You, you you understand the principle of how to swim uh, but you're, you you don't know it's just not working yes, yes. Uh, and then after a while after maybe three months you begin to get your head above the water it's a little every, bit and yes everybody's different then. yeah I example I remember when there was a white belt I was uh, confused but uh, I got this um, fascination to learn oh, I want to learn this I got this passion on me I want to learn Everything in the churches, but some people they are not like that, yeah, because everybody's different. Some people need a lot of attention, some people need to take care of until they trick themselves, they love the jiu jitsu, and they keep it coming back. That's very important. A lot of people, a lot of they they uh they are so busy and they don't have attention to the beginners. They are the main ones. Obviously, the guys are high belts. They are important as well. But they're already... They're they, can already take, they can take care of themselves a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yes, yes. But these beginners, if you want to continue a successful academy, you need to look after these beginners. Because trust me, if you don't give no attention, don't shake their hand and say, hello, hello, they don't call them by name. Yes. All right? Yeah. They will not be back yeah. next week. Uh, yeah, it's all right, like, but no. We'll be all right. Hello, my, how are you? They teach they all you have to do this. I know this is a mistake that they will be back next week. I'm guaranteed that. You know, that's that's important. You know. And give as well some goals today. Look, I want to this next level, blah blah blah. How you jiu is but yeah, Chris Chris is here next to me. I know guys, guys, Chris is here next to me and and I know the student. I the first time in, and then we met in Chad and example he's a blue belt. I've been to him for good three years now. Three, three years. And I said, Why I said to you, you should just was he was very Milo and it was, people was taking advantage of there, right? And said, put it in the corner. Chris, sort yourself out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody think the piece. <laughs> Let's be a jiu guy. Now he's an awesome problem. No one's roving. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely amazing. Powerful. And there's different kind of jiu-jitsu as well. We have a count jiu-jitsu and a striker. Yeah. I'm a counter. I have to wait somewhere, strike and see the mistakes and, sure. and attack. But, you know, he's, 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 uh, they, they strike a guy. They strike a jiu-jitsu guy. They are very um, powerful, isn't it? It's a powerful jiu-jitsu. They want, I'm bad. They want pass your guard. They want, uh, they want, and the stamina, the stamina don't go. Some people, the stamina don't go. They never go. But some people get tired. But I divide a little bit. Uh, they strike a people go their side. Yeah. <laughs> The counter people go their side because uh, both we can learn between them. Yeah. Because sometimes they, are, they strike a people, they can be very aggressive and can hurt people. Yeah. But I don't say, oh, look, don't get careful because that is, uh, don't use your strength. Do I think, ah, uh, don't do this. Don't. Do. I don't believe that. I believe everybody have a different characteristic, but they, they have different personality. I don't like to take the personality from the person who you want to be. Yes, careful your training partners. And you can, when you get the armbar, careful, cross choke, whatever it is, leg locks, whatever it is. But you should never stop them to be who they are. They want to be in a particular sport because everybody's different characteristics here. You know, uh, I'm a very calm in the ground. You know, I'm not, I'm not to be honest, I'm, I've never been a great competitor. Never. And uh, at the time, it was a blue, purple belt. I had a great titles. But... When there was a high level, I never had interest to really do a competition. Yeah, you've got to be very, very driven to, yes, to, to I, do well I at a high level. Yeah, I don't want, I, I never want to be a competitor, but I have a passion about the sport. I have a passion about learning. Max McKean has a passion about teaching. You know, he's, he's probably come from the family. My father is a, is a, a uh, engineer teacher he's yeah. he teaching hydraulics in university my mother is a is a history professor oh really They're both, both your, your parents are teachers he's a professor yeah. Yeah. and I I want to be a teacher maybe because I could see how passionate they are these guys are happy I want to be like they you know and now I understand what it is yeah. if you love some things you teach make you 
uh, is much better. Yeah. You know, it's not just teaching, you go to working and teach. You teach what you want to teach, you teach what you love. That yeah. that, that is something in one million person, one person can wake up in the morning and do, okay, I'm going to work. I'm happy going to work. I'm absolutely wonderful, happy to go to work today because I'm teaching what I love. Yeah. That is a great thing about it, you know. And I think I'm very lucky because now, imagine me here now. Uh, I started working very hard this counter. I came here with nothing. Could even speak English. Not, absolutely nothing. And I want to try a new life here because it's a great country. Bloody hell, it's England. The Queen lives here. Wow. Yeah. Mick Jagger lives here. <laughs> My God, wait, Mickey, Mickey lives here. I won't be here. That's it. <laughs> Jagger is here. I won't be here. <laughs> so what happened here? So I I decided you now work hard here. But all of a sudden my life went all the way. Now I'm full time BJJ instructor, do you believe that? Yeah. I do nothing else. Yeah. Nothing else in my life. You know, I had a few opportunities to Open Academy there, Open Academy. But I work now with different associations, different businessmen. Uh, I have different clients and that can, can cover all my bills. So I'm, I'm so happy there. That, that's nah, awesome, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah. I feel very privileged. You know, I do the same. I'm full-time jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I see my friends and family and stuff who, who have to get out of bed early on Monday and they don't want to go into work. They had a shit day at work. And <laughs> I can't have a shit day at work, you know? <laughs> yes. I don't think you kind of, you can't have a bad day teaching jiu-jitsu, yes. so I love doing it. And yeah, yeah, for trust very me, I've it. been there in a shit day at work for yeah, 13 yeah, yeah. years. <laughs> wake up in the morning, yeah. staying there off for so many hours. Or yeah. Yeah, no. At least I know what it is then. You're lucky exactly. you, you don't know what it is. <laughs> you're much luckier than me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe you realize how lucky you are because uh, because you've had the crap as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so uh, you know, you've been you've been teaching jujitsu for so long, and not only for so long, but over such a big change of you know the the landscape of jujitsu yeah. in the country. Uh, I just want to kind of yes. understand if anything or what if anything has changed in your teaching or the students over that 21 okay. years that you've been teaching in the uk i uh, i had a when i started edmonton was a very busy academy there in north, north london it was a little bit sharks academy because a lot of people different uh, backgrounds martial arts judo wrestling and it is right next to another uh, mma academy as well so you had a lot of the MMA guys coming yes, in? Yes, go there. And the, the MMA guys there, you know, no, no disrespect. They are, who I had the experience, they are very ego. They cannot lose. Yeah. And this is not jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu, you lose today, tomorrow you, you, you tap, tomorrow you learn, and you share the information, you share the techniques. Mm. But when MMA guys go there, they just, just, just want to be the best. That's why it is. And uh, uh, we had this crazy academy in Edmonton and the goals I want to get there get my name and the team name quickly as possible so we sometimes you stay there two hours three hours training every day techniques drills and everything and and you did you did achieve a lot of things to put uh, our name down there at the time we hit a lot of good results in the academies and a uh, particular guard you know I was teaching much much guard a lot of people want to learn guard so People used to come to me to learn a lot of things, God, you know, all the kind of subjects, whether it's by the God, the high God, the cross God, you know, name, you know, this kind of God, you know. They, they, you know, the La Riva God, they used to come all over to me to, to learn this particular yeah. subject, you know. Because you just the time when I fought, the time when the Edmonton always um, start teaching, people was doing Jiu-Jitsu, but they know much doing God. Mm. So... People from another academy used to come to me to learn God. That's always my passion was about how my life. That's why I did jujitsu. Jujitsu was a passion was my God, the God, teach God. Mm. Sweeps, uh, you know, all this kind of God, whatever. But uh, now all these years, um, I feel I achieve what I have to achieve now. Then. Uh, I think like, uh, like every, every old man comes this level, isn't it? Look at Hickson now, all spiritual. It's a little bit boring, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm coming now just the level where I, I live down the way of live, a way of live with Jiu-Jitsu. And it's more um, spiritual level in the way uh, we share good things, 
you know, we training and we we concentrate and uh, it's still a good jiu-jitsu, it's still a very comfortable way because uh, when you train, you train hard. But it's very important to train and also, uh, okay, let me just put it this way, okay? Otherwise, you're never going to understand me. Every, I think everything you do in this life, doesn't matter what you do, you do, you have to put in the spiritual side. Because we have, no one going to escape from the death sentence. Everybody going to die, okay? You're going to leave your jiu-jitsu here. You're going to leave all your things here. You're going to leave all your kids here, okay? But one thing you take is, what did you learn this life, right? Correct? Yeah. I believe everybody is uh, is an energy. I believe the body is just a tool mm-hmm. for you to learn something, right? Yeah. So, what do you what do you gonna use at jujitsu? Because it's a great tool, jujitsu. It's a it's, look. We have any couch, any religion, any color. And the jiu-jitsu match, doesn't matter how confrontation in the world today, no one going to see any confrontation in the dojo today. Yeah. And any time, go to Israel, you see Muslims uh, training jiu-jitsu the Jewish people. Yeah. You know, you go in here in the UK, have all these kind of cultures and, 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 and religions training together as a one what unity we call Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? How wonderful is that? Mm. We we have such a powerful tool mm. to make a better world. Why we don't do it? You know? Now today, look, I, I'm a little bit disappointed some few things. Today is very money-wise. Jiu-Jitsu, sure. You know? And uh, I, I was, I had a, this weekend I went to a half a chair BJJ and the uh, the guy teach the desk, Enzo Vulo, in one of my black belts. He's a, such a wonderful person. And, and uh, now he's um, he stopped teaching now for the moment. And he's giving the academy for, uh, for one of his brown belts there. But now he's teaching kids with uh, learn difficult. Okay. All right. He's just specialized there, teach IT and try maths and he's, he's you know me, so yeah, 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 there yeah, a few times, and uh, that is the site. Is now we're gonna start teaching jujitsu for just kind of kids. I, I, I do not believe jujitsu came this world for just putting money in someone's pocket. Yeah, it's such a biggest organization. There we talk about huge organizations. That BJJ organization, people have enough money. Use it just powerful too to help other people. You know that's what I'm gonna do now. You know I had the. Uh, Time in my life now, I did everything. I'm gonna go another level now to to try to put it this jujitsu as a better aspect. If you all think about money wise, you know, to try help uh, different uh, societies. I mm. think we taught them my kids, man. They know taught my kids there. The 65% is a single mother. Mm. You know how much trouble the kids there now. Imagine having have a jiu-jitsu there in Tottenham for yeah. just for these kids. These kids could be be a better person when they grow up just because the jiu-jitsu. Do you know I have over 100 kids in Synergy Fitness now? And I have a lot of trouble kids in school, a lot of gypsy kids. Yeah. They have a lot of trouble there, you know? Do you know the difference? Teachers came to my dojo to say thank you and to appreciate all the job I've been doing with these kids. You know, we have to use it all. You hear, we, have, we are powerful people here, intelligent people here. You have to use the power to not just make money, but to each one of us has responsibility to help our community. Do you understand? Yeah. I think it's so... A uh, little bit so I wake up, I put your money in my pocket, I teach you Jesus, you know, it's it's not all there. Let's use, let's use to make a better world. That's what it is. Oh, what's, what's the point? What's the point? Ah, then then you die and leave enough behind. What did you do did good for, for this world? You need to do something good for this world. It's important. Mm. All right? <laughs> That's all I think now. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't step. agree with you anymore, you know. And I think <clears throat> you know, it's nice to see um 
a lot of people are trying to to use jujitsu for that and um i think actually people trying to to leverage jujitsu just for the money or in the minority you know i think a lot of people just lot yesterday i was at a uh a, a, a show called fight to, uh fight for life it was yes. a submission grappling show and all the money goes to charity to help the, the uh, kids and they're building wells in africa and all of this stuff like that this is a wonderful thing. and uh lots of charity stuff going on and uh raising money for different organizations through jiu-jitsu and i think and we should continue doing that yeah and more and more and more and i think why i say just forget a little bit this flag yeah. uh we i'm there i'm here uh, uh i'm pertains there we are jiu-jitsu community because I'm not in another community. I'm a mechanical engineer, but I hate engineering yeah. now. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not a Brazilian. Uh, I don't say that I'm Brazilian or I'm in, living in Britain. I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. That's why I feel now. We are jiu-jitsu people. We are not Brazilians, you're not English, you're not Americans, you're not uh, black, white, green, or you're not uh, Muslims, Christians. Or We are jiu-jitsu people. It's one way to think, one way to help. And we have to unification all this. Think about I'm um, there on this and help everybody. Yeah. And from this, the judges is going to grow as not just a wonderful sport, but as a wonderful thing to be. Yeah. Right? 100%. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, you were saying earlier how you're, uh, you know, you've grown this gym from just one gym to many gyms now. You know, what that's, what's that like kind of having that big organization and, 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 and lots of different academies now? Uh, it's great because you meet, you meet so many so many people, so many friends, and and uh, you share so much information as well. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely, and everybody's different, isn't it? Yeah. You go to the north, they are different. They are a little bit cocky. Yeah, hey, oh, <laughs> my, oh, you. <laughs> Make me laugh. And in England, it's the crazy thing because you travel one now to another, the accent it's completely change. Different. Oh, yes. You go to Essex, oh, shut up, you know, <laughs> this kind of thing. I, well, that's my main academy in Essex. Well, North London, they speak completely different. Yeah. The attitude is different as well. Yeah. Some guys, they, they some areas to another areas, they train harder. Yeah. No, no, they are more social. Yeah, and but that that is a great thing about you have a different organization, different place because you see different cultures as well. How they are, you know, it's it's wonderful to to just learn, learning and uh, have the experience to learn this uh, variety. Yeah, variety. Vari yeah, variety yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's always yeah. great. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. You know, I, I'm I'm lucky enough to go and uh, teach different seminars in different academies and stuff like that. And you're absolutely right. You know, it's. Yeah. Uh, one academy may do this one thing really well and then they don't do this thing and then you go to another academy half an hour away and it's completely the opposite and kind of I think if you and and, and, and that's why I think it's so nice to travel uh, with jujitsu and, and go to other uh, you know I advise anyone obviously uh, you go away with your you go away on honeymoon with your new wife and you decide to take your key with you, you might get in a little bit of trouble. But, <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, if you're... In, if, I heard that one before, right? <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, uh, if you can do it whenever you go away or if you're working somewhere else, yeah. try and drop in on that academy and, yeah. and, and check out what it's like because you'll be shocked by the difference. Even though you're doing the same sport, there's so, like you said, there's so much variety yeah. within what we do. Uh, from the way that people talk to the way that people roll to the way that people train to the way they drill to the way that they do an armbar everything's different everywhere you go and I think that's such a nice uh, it's never boring you know right. you never know what it's going to be like and it's not, never even boring within your own academy and you go to a different academy somewhere else or in another country and it's there's, you can see the similarities and you can see the differences yes I think that's a nice thing about it yes yeah. wonderful anyway I, I, uh, I so you, you mentioned Enzo just a second ago well, he gave me some stuff to ask you about. Um, this is really? Yeah, he did. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah, he said uh, you did some work as a doorman. Oh, my word. <laughs> yes, and I he did. said you have some good jiu-jitsu stories, right? I did. I did we, we, yeah. do, we do love some jiu-jitsu right. doorman when stories. I was, when, when, I was, um, <laughs> when I was working JP Morgan, I used to have a... Um, I did 14 years door work. 14 years. Of door work, door work. Wow, fourteen years, and I was all over the place. What, the whilst you were at JP Morgan, I was working with JP Morgan. Yeah. When the time was, I was with JP yeah. Morgan Monday to Friday. The weekends, I used to in the evenings do the door Friday work. evening, Saturday night, and Sundays. I used yeah. to do the door work. I used to be okay, workaholic. Yeah. Trust me, I was yeah. any teaching jujitsu. Wow, in a weekday. 
But yes, uh, I've been in all these big clubs called Tiger Tiger, you know, you talk about Soho Bar, you know, I met a lot of celebrities like wow. Elton John, really? George Michael, uh, Andy Whitehouse, and and uh, Oli Mars, all, all these guys, you know, I've been, not just uh, door walk, but I did a little bit. No, the I'm not saying bodyguard stuff, yeah, because yeah. I've never been a bodyguard. It's just like a, helping these guys to keep safe. To yeah. see. I'm not, I'm not going to show up bodyguard. I'm not bodyguard. I'm yeah. not close protection. I'm not specialized on that. They just call me, oh, do you mind just looking after this guy? Yeah, I go there. Give me extra money. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, I had a lot of problems there, you know, when, except Faces, the club in Faces, very, uh -huh. very well known in it. In the, in the Essex, and uh, everybody there is huge. And compared to these guys, I, I'm just a, a small guy. And then the owner there, look at me, look at the head door, man. And I saw his body language when he can, can walk there the first day. And he said to, he started looking, oh, this little Brazilian here doing here. Oh, this guy, look at me, oh, what's that, this about? So this um, the head door, man, his name at the time was Martin. He's such an easy watch. <laughs> <laughs> so the the main the main used to be a lot of means there's a lot of trouble there. So there's yeah. eleven door means there. They wow. have, a, have the front the front um team and the back team used yeah. to be inside. So when they could not hand the guy with anybody, this is called Arlens. Arlens, you have a trouble in the door. <laughs> this guy <laughs> That's it, just put to sleep, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they try to punch us, keep taking the back. Oh, uh, I just have to let the punch for us. Yeah. Is that, is that the go-to move? Is the back the back take? Yeah, that's uh, right. Back back take take. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put a good, good three guys to sleep in there. You yeah. Know? And the more higher they are, more higher that is better because they come more hungry, isn't it? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take drugs. And more drugs you take is better for me, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when, when did you stop doing the door work? I realize I'm getting too old for this. I go stop twice as yeah, well. Really? Once, yeah, I go stop on the hand. Can you see here now? The road, can you see? Wow. Yeah, and I have a big. Yeah, well, no the way. Door, yeah, the door walk is not is not a great thing to to walk anymore, because the time used to be a great money as well. Yeah, and the risk. And the travel. Well, that, that's why it's good money because yeah, it's good risky, money. right? And there used to be a less uh, less trouble. Now the money is rubbish. And it's a lot more trouble. So much more trouble. Wow. Yeah, so I decide I'm getting to I'm 45 now. Well, the time I finished now, five years now, I don't do door work. I've yeah. stopped about 40. Still 40 now, I had enough. Yeah. You know, now I want to spend more time home. Just Not getting stabbed? No, that's it, I don't. So how, how, yeah. how do you deal with that? You know, if you've, you've been stabbed on two separate occasions? Yes. Oh, my head is like a, um, my head is like a map. Really? Oh, so um, on Masmo Hill, I decided to, <laughs> to walk in Masmo Hill. I had dormant uh -huh. because I used to be a head dormant in this place because the experience I had, they just put me straight to as a head dormant. Or okay, Alan's is the, is the company I used to work. Uh, Alan's, I have a, a this door in Masmo Hill close to your house. And uh, the head dormant have the problems there with some people. But he's no going to go in back in there because uh, he knows uh, the guy's going to go back. So I went there to walk there, isn't it? To take over his place. They got confused, me with another guy. So they came behind, they jumped the wall, they come behind, and uh, they knocked me, my head, with baseball bar. No. Yeah. So I turned up in the hospital. That one nearly died there. was wow. bleeding to death, yeah. Then uh, I spoke with the middle band because I know a lot of people in North London. Because being door walk, you know, I'm not all those shit people as well. You know? Yeah. And uh, such the middle man, look, uh, what happened to me? You know, I'm not say I'm not gonna say what community is. Yeah. But, uh, and it's a guy go, do you know who you got, it, guys? You go, oh, it's a Brazilian, the, the Brazilian guy. Yeah, I think you better sort yourself out with him now, otherwise he's gonna go after you. So. So they came to me and say sorry, give me a few, few things, and yeah, yeah we sort it now. Everything goes. Goes. <laughs> <laughs> but I said to you, no, no, you could kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's such like a. Yeah. I know a lot of people who have worked the doors, and that's such a. That's like a whole other world that so many it's people. It's another just... level because you you have to know a lot of people. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, a lot, a lot of it must be not just knowing how to protect yourself with jiu-jitsu, yes. but knowing how to talk to people and how to read Absolute people and how to everything. This is our area. There is is people don't realize. Ah, it's a doorman. It's a door. It's just a doorman. It's actually it's very um, stressful work. And one more busy is the the club is is. More hassle as well, and more popularity. The busy, the popular, the, the club is is more responsibility to have to, yeah. to do it. Is is hard work. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, you know the, the the names of the clubs that you're talking about. They're yeah, big, I, they're I, big I, clubs. Yes, I work in the most biggest and famous clubs in 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 the UK. The you even the the gay club. Yeah, I I the uh, factory. Yeah, the biggest Soho gay club. Yeah, two thousand gay people. There was yeah. a head dog in there yeah. for two years. Wow, you know, it was amazing. Yeah, it was an amazing experience. They are crazy. <laughs> they are <was that> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have more trouble there or less trouble there? No, I have more trouble there. No one fights. They don't fight. Yeah. But they take so much drugs. Yeah. You know, every night ambulance outside. Really? You know, this is, that's why they close down. Really? Yeah. Too much. So it's not only about problems with violence, with violence but, yeah. but we have a problems with drugs as well. We have to to be experienced yeah, proper first aid yeah. you have to know how to help these people it doesn't matter you just do a little course of first aid you need to know how to look after these people yeah. or they die in your hand wow. you know yes you know it's not easy it's a big responsibility it. oh it's a lot of responsibility wow. yes wow. you know <laughs> That's There's a, another area. Yeah. I, do, I never thought you were gonna ask. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I did. Yeah. <laughs> so wait. So so the, the, you know the couple of times that you got stabbed. Um, yeah. Did you did you like manage to grapple the guy from there? Listen, the, the time you, you don't see they stabbing you. So you you yeah. It's a big messy, big big fight. Then all of a sudden I jump, boom boom, separate, and yeah. uh, uh, all of a sudden I was looking the floor. Blood, it's bloody everywhere. What's going on? When I look at me, mm. was my belly was going stop. Yeah, but the funny thing is, is your body going shock trance. You yeah. start shaking. You don't stop. You look like you are freezing. Yeah, and you freezing as well. So the ambulance say, "Come down, come down," and they explain to me why I'm shaking because you, your body is shocked. Yeah. Well, you know uh, that yeah. that's so common. I think anyone who ever gets stabbed, yeah. they never feel themselves get stabbed. No, like you see the movies where it's like, ah, yeah, like that. yes, it's never it's never like that. It's always no. it's always like a chaos, and then yeah. the person's looking down and there's blood, and it's them. Yes, you know, and and uh, I actually the last person that I had on the podcast was a uh, he was a physio, and he was talking about sort of. That that physical mind connection and how your body prioritizes what it has to do. You know, you've got to, uh -huh. which, which is why uh, it, it, you see these people in the war. Uh, they get shot and they keep, but they need to get to wherever they need to go. They go there and then when they get there, their body then goes, "Oh, you've been shot," and then you get all the shock and everything like that. The, the most amazing thing about Discover even though yeah. one day I was in Gold's Green, it's a nightclub. A long time ago, I had a nightclub there, and. Uh, this guy, he punched me my my uh, face. Yeah, he fractured the bone wow. in my left eye. But uh, what happened? My face grown so much like a elephant man. Yeah, and uh, Keep yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what happened was actually your body defending against your injury. They actually isolated this. And I didn't know the guy's ambulance explained to me what it was. Yeah. You like an elephant man, but it's a good thing because your body actually protects you against your injury. Wow. That's why they isolate yeah. your injury against your body until your body have a time to sort the things out. How amazing is that? Yeah, no, the body's incredible is, uh, to no, deal with really that sort of uh, trauma. Yes. And, yeah. Thank, thankfully. Yes. Thankfully. Um, <laughs> What was that? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a good question that I meant to ask you, which is, uh, you know, that you've spent so much time teaching in around the UK right. and in Europe and stuff like that. And then obviously you, you, you got up into your purple belt in Brazil. What is the big differences that you've experienced between the culture of jiu-jitsu in the UK compared to in Brazil? Okay, in Brazil, when do we start? 10 people start. 10 people is a black belt. Here, ten people start. One, it's a black woman. Less than that. Really? So a lot more people leave. Oh, that that we feel train jujitsu. 
Yeah, um, or I experienced my yeah, everybody in my academy start with me. Everybody's a black belt. Wow. Here they give up. They give up. That's, I've, ne- I've never heard that before. Yes. In Brazil, people stay more than here. Wow. I don't know. It's a kind of culture thing. Ma- it, I, I think it might be. You know, I think that the the you know there's definitely a a, a big level of uncomfortableness yeah. in the jujitsu. It's hard. To get very a black belt, hard. it's very hard. Yes. And I think that... Um, it's a painful, enjoyable yeah. journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, it is. And for yes. a, lot of, a lot of people, it's they do give up a little bit too easy. So it's yes. interesting. You know, I can see how the Brazilians have a little bit more of a tough mentality where they're not going to quit. Yes. Whereas, unfortunately, some people, and that's obviously not all of them because lots of people don't quit, even though it's very easy to do so. Uh, but maybe in Brazil, they've got a little bit more of that toughness to, yes. to never quit. But you put it this way, right? Do you know it? Probably you don't know that. But 80%, 80%, there's a law. Yeah. The young population in Brazil... A red step in the BJJ man. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Eighty percent is a red step in the BJJ. No way. I swear. That wow. was the the search I read about it. Wow. Yes. How amazing is that? And we put it be eighty percent. I don't think everybody's black belt, but yeah. probably everyone. Eighty percent probably. I put it at sixty percent is a blue belt. Wow. Definitely. I don't know if they're going to reach a purple, brown, but it's, it's a long journey. When you get the blue belt. To There's it, a lot of people out there training. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, so, do, you know, do you know how many black belts? There's thousands of black belts. And the good ones as well. It's not like a, oh, you just black. Whoa, tough black belts. And you have a blue belt. There's a tough blue belt. Yeah. at the level where where they tap black belts yeah. easily. Yeah. You know, I saw a kid. Another day I went there and I saw a kid there. His purple belt, George, just, just 20, 19 years old, 20, something like that. He was tapping everybody. Oh, the top black belt. He was a skinny kid. Oh, Jesus. That proved it to you, right? Your jitsu doesn't need no strength enough to build that yeah. level. You know? yeah. It's unbelievable. It, it is such a wonderful eyes. Oh, yeah. Just, just amazing thing. Yeah. You know, you see a big, huge guy come on top of you. And this skinny guy, oh, who is you? Just had the guy tap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you was loving before, right? Now I've been loving you. <laughs> and it's funny, even me, myself, I'm a bigger. Yeah. Right? And I've been through so many years. Obviously, my stamina now is the same, but they come come on with a skinny guy, right? Yeah. Or roll with the skinny guy. And and sometimes it, sometimes the body, the body has to connect it to get good drills. The body don't connect it. Yeah. And you you they gotta take your back. They're going to sum you. Yeah. Doesn't matter how experienced, how good you are, if the body don't connect because you just have something to be the the body has to connect with the the roll. Yeah. Some people I roll some people, it's very nice. You just boom boom roll floating is nice. But some people it's so difficult to roll because I don't know, because it's small or, and it's difficult to defend as well. Because I'm big big guy and the huge guy. And this little guy can catch him. He's like a you know what I mean? Mm. And then we have a few there that then you mm. some people it's so easy to train and some people it's difficult to roll. Hundred percent. Oh it's it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. But it's it's how it is. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that's really interesting about the kind of uh, the toughness out there that they just stay, they 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 they're a little bit more consistent with it. They don't quit as much. And what about sort of the the actual training itself? Is there a big difference between uh, well, training? Uh, uh, in well, I thought here here it, 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 I think it's different. But here they get bored as well if you teach uh, one two positions uh, a week or a class. Here they want more techniques. Instead, there give two positions or three positions a week. They master. They do a lot this. more sparring. Yeah, sparring yes. and they master in this position. Yeah, they drill this position. They keep it going in this position. Here is more. Oh, oh sorry. Here is more. It's like a, you have to every class different position. Mm. Every class different position. If you do just the same position every week, they don't. Here mm. they don't like. Mm. They complain. Yeah, I do that. I do I do I do one position for maybe two months. 
they they, compl they don't like yeah. so you're doing the right way they, they don't complain to me though huh? <laughs> oh they complain to me no maybe I'm going to the wrong do I change the students <laughs> <laughs> I just beat them up a little bit I keep them in check you're right <laughs> that's why you're young man I can't roll anymore anybody I'll tap I'll brown belts and bubble belts yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> but I know what you mean you know uh, I think you, know, you kind of have to re-educate people about how yeah. you know you've got to sometimes it's not enough just to tell someone that this is how you want to teach is you have to explain to someone like yes. I, I, I I'm going to teach you we're going to do butterfly guard for two months yes. because I at the end of that I want you to know everything that you yes. can know about butterfly guard uh -huh. if I show you this in a in two days you'll forget about it by the third day that's right yes. so you know I think that is the best way to do it and I also understand that a lot of people can get bored but I think um, uh, it's important for people to understand that you know, it's like uh, it's like lifting weights or like doing any strength training. Yeah. You know, everyone wants the 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 abs in five days. Uh -huh. yeah. But if you get abs in five days, you lose them in five days. Oh yes, you know. Absolutely. But if you work hard and you lift weights for a year and now you have got a good body, yeah. you're going to keep that for a longer time. Yes. I think that's the same with learning stuff yes, as well. You yeah, you're right. You're right. In, in, in Brazil, they roll much more. Yeah. Much more, much more. And some people go class different uh, days of class. One class. Just drill another class. Just roll. Mm. You, know? you talk about people. Sometimes classes four classes a day. People come four class. Wow. They do nothing. Just go home or go in the restaurant, eat, go back. It's a professional. Sleep on, sleep on the mat. Yeah. 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 I was I was I was like that when there was blue purple. I was minimum minimum two class a day. Minimum. But I was compared to the time I was young. I was I was doing nothing. Just going uh, in, in the evenings. I used to go to university at the time. And uh, they all day I have a just your training. Yeah. Nothing else. And that's when I achieved my higher level Jiu Jitsu, I think, when we, I was young. And you learned so much. But obviously, I have another way to learn. When you teach, yes. you learn in different aspects. Yeah. You don't learn to be a, a, a fighter or, a, a, you know, but you learn how to. To content and how to to discipline yourself and other people. It's, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain to you, but it's it's different ways. Yeah, it's definitely you know I I do and I always say that uh, it, teaching so good for learning because yeah. you have to think about it in so many different ways. But it's not the same as being taught something. Yes. You know, it, it really isn't. It's not like uh, people believe that learning jujitsu is just one thing and you can learn jujitsu from your instructor or learn jujitsu from teaching or learn jujitsu from a book or learn jujitsu from YouTube. Yes. But every different one of those things is different. Yeah. Like uh, what you learn from watching a technique yeah. uh, and what you learn from feeling a technique is different. It's all fun these days and everybody, yeah. Feel different, it's different technique. Yeah, like example, if you see your arm by example, or see the sweep, or whatever, it's pretty basic stuff. But I mean, you do your way, yeah. how is, you think it's better, and you teach this way to your students, yeah, because there is your personality, yeah, how you know things. And, and I'm the same, mm. I'm the same. I learned so many things different uh, because I, I, I learned a lot of jiu for different things. Maurice Gomes, I learned. I learned De La Hive, I learned with uh, with my teacher, you know, Robert Ferreira. Uh, and uh, obviously, we learn a lot with the students as well. Sometimes they come to academy a little bit crazy, technical, you never seen before. Yeah. You know, yeah. Then, wow, wow, I want to learn that. Come, come here, show me as well, you know. We learn, we learn the teaching, we learn to be then in dojo. And it doesn't matter how much you think you are technical you are, you're still learning. Yeah. You know, that that's all it is. Yeah, 100%. And I think it's... You know, I, I still feel that I'm learning as much now as I did, probably maybe even more now than when I was a uh, than when I was a white belt or a blue belt or a purple belt. You know, from from teaching, not being taught anything, but um, once you understand, truly understand how jujitsu works, yes. it opens your. Mm. It's like uh, you've got storage in your head. And improve your jujitsu. Hundred yeah. percent. You know, you you've got this box in your head, and once it's almost full, and you think that there's going to be nothing, you open a bigger box. You know, once that's full, then there's a bigger box and then you can get so much more in. I feel like now I have more capacity to learn and to understand stuff on a deeper level yes. than I did even when you would think that it would be the other way that you'd get diminishing yeah. returns on knowledge in jujitsu. 
And in some sense, you would where in terms of different positions or understanding what to do from every position, you know, you're going to get diminishing returns on that. But on actually understanding those positions, it's going to be the opposite. The more you understand, the actually the more you realize that there is to understand. And the funny thing is sometimes it should come from me really frustrated. Yeah. Uh, let my jiu-jitsu not improve. I feel a little bit, uh, my jiu-jitsu is a little bit stuck. I said, don't worry, everybody get through this, you know. Just stay, keep it training. Yeah. All of a sudden, <gasps> yeah. you realize without, it's like a magical, mm. his level of jiu-jitsu <clears throat> is much more higher. Yeah. But you don't see this. It's like a, it's like Hicks on Grace, right? Invisible jiu-jitsu, right? <laughs> you, don't, you don't see that. Coming. I think with so many people, yeah. you, you see something click. Yeah. And you can, you can literally see it in a day. Where one day they're struggling with something and you're, you're, you know, or for months they're struggling with something and you're explaining every single time, struggling, struggling, struggling. They, co you know, they, they, they leave on Thursday, they come back Monday and they've got it. And then Tuesday they've got it and Wednesday and then they've got it forever. Yes. And it's yes. so strange. It's like something. And I'm sure when you actually, if you were to look further into it, there's something about the synapses in the brain or the connections that they're making where suddenly it clicks and yep. then they've got it forever. Look, I just buff this wait the right moment, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wait the right moment. I'm not giving you this to you. I don't know who it is, God or universe or everything. Yeah. I'm not giving this to you now. Yeah. But uh, the right moment. I, man, let's see if you deserve. Yeah. All right. Give another three days, right? Yeah. So they three days. Wow, I got I got this stuff now. I've seen people doing betting ball or butterfly guard or the, you know, so much weird name. You don't even know where it comes from. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. You just have a patience, you keep it training, and never give up. A black belt is a white belt, never give up. That's hundred percent. Yes. Never ever ever give up. Yeah. If you have a bad day, go training. Bad week. If you have, you cannot at least put your face there. Never give up. At least put your face once, once a week. Yeah, once a week, just you because you can't or you're very busy. I said, keep it. Say my shoes. I said, a lot of shoes with my high level belts. They too busy in their lives. Listen, it's no excuse here. I say today, at least two hours in a whole week. How you thank can do you very that. much. You know, just to say hello to me, say hello to your friends. You know, you, little role is helpful for you. You know, it's every for us. We we want to see you. You know, it's it's not just we. You know, we know each other for so many years now. You know, you, you just disappear like that. I get upset. Yeah, yeah. I get upset. I ring. They what? Did I do? Did I do anything to you yeah. today? Yeah, for you don't come here. I haven't seen you for two months. Yeah, you know why? But oh, I'm really sorry. I'm about no no excuse. So they start coming. Yeah. So they realize yeah. I get upset <laughs> 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 because I care. Yeah. I care for my students. It's, to me, it's like a, uh, our brothers. It's, yeah. it's, just, it's not just a, a tool where I uh, I teach and you know you, see, you talk about someone you see for so many years. You know you don't want oversight this person because his personal life to disappear. We keep you want to see him, yeah. make you happy. Sometimes uh, I'm a little bit down and I don't see this guy for one month and was I come the door? Wow, it's you that they increase. Wow, I say no. Do you remember, guys, this guy, the first class for free? Yeah. <laughs> because everybody forgot who he is. <laughs> guys, his class is for free, yeah? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> But, you know, I, I, I think it's so true. And, and uh, you know, I think uh, obviously the majority of people that are going to be listening to this are probably people who are training. Yeah. But if anyone's listening to this who isn't training, you know, it's just... And, and I, I'm sure you've seen it and I've seen it... Um, over the years that I've been teaching, you know, half as long yes. as you have. Daniel, you don't have a clue how much I follow you. Yeah. I remember when you were skinny. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have a deal. They laugh Palaris. Yeah. They ask, uh, first question was for Nisha. Nisha, if you listen to this, right? Uh, ask her, who's fighting? Uh, da, 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 da. Daniel is oh, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel is there, I'm going. I'm going to watch this guy fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure, sir, I appreciate it. Big phone yours. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, you know, we've been training a long time and when it comes to people taking time off or quitting jujitsu, they once you quit, it's so hard to get back in. You know, if you take two months off because you come back and the people that you were beating, they're beating you or you just, it, you were shot before and now you're blunt. It's so hard to, it's, it's, if you take a long time off, but the longer it takes, worse. The, lo the worse it gets. And then someone quits for, for like, for a yeah. long time, because for a year, two years, three years, 10 years. 
every single one of those people who quit, they regret it. Yeah, but you know that's that's why I said to everybody is is uh, uh, jiu jitsu is like this, right? You get a good level. If you miss it three weeks, it's a hundred ten percent. You're gonna see the difference you're mm. That's why I say to you people, don't don't think it is you're gonna be good forever because it's not gonna be good forever. It's, that's why I say to everybody, it's a way to live. Yeah. It's no a sport like you're gonna learn the sport, you're gonna be be good in volleyball, be good in football. Here, you yeah, your knowledge is there. No knowledge never gonna go. But if you uh, stop training three weeks, or two weeks maybe no, if you feel, if you're very good, but 100% doesn't matter how good you are. Three weeks, I'm guaranteed you're, you're going to feel a level go down. Mm. That's why I say to everybody, minimum once a week, mm. twice a week, come here. For your level, continue. It never goes, you know. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, when you come back, it's going to be so hard to come back. Mm. You know, you're going to take another too much, go back on the level you was before. Mm. So uh, experience should be teaching. Now in the, in the great fighters, great jiu-jitsu, great ground, and they stop training for because of uh, work commitment, family commitment. They all of a sudden, they come back. You can see in their eyes a bit of frustration because everybody was white belt or blue belt to stop. Yeah. Tap you out, it's a passionado, give you a hard time. And you can see in your eyes, the guy, the eyes going down, and and this, I put it. I know you think, <laughs> I know you think, but you go, you take. I said to you, we take the person. Oh, you take another two months mm. to go back where you was because we le you left here absolutely fantastic level, mm. and now we realize we stopped for a good six months, my. Yeah, you know you have you have to give your time for three months now. Yeah. Just please don't be disappointed. Yeah, that's where everybody. You just have to a little bit of chance. Come back, come back training, and never think I'm no role in this person because I don't tap. I'm no role in this there because yeah, I have the ego. He's no ego here. You here? You stop training for a little while. Uh, everybody is your brother. Yeah, you know it's no ego. Doesn't matter how good you are. You tap is learn, and and uh, they are here to help you. Right, that's why it is, you know. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> yeah. uh, Arlons, I wanted to ask you another question because uh, I think this is very interesting, especially for the old school guys. You know, I, you are an old school guy when it comes to the UK, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, yeah. the oldest school guy that there can be. Um, and uh, it, this question is specifically about the sport Jiu Jitsu versus the self defense Jiu Jitsu. Uh -huh. You know, so. Uh, I find that the more modern guys are a lot less interested in the, in the self-defense wow. stuff. There's a big question. Yeah. You know, the, <laughs> the, the, the more modern guys are less interested in the self-defense stuff. And the old school guys, when I've spoken to Mauricio, when I've spoken to Mark Warder, John Hegan, all of these guys are really big into the self-defense stuff. Now, you are old school guy and also doorman. a doorman for 13, 14 years. So I want to I wanna really get into what your take is on oh, the... Right. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as a as a self defense and the, that side of it. <clears throat> I think is the most complete self defense I ever know. Bra like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or the Gracie, com you know, the Gracie Brazilian self defense stuff. Yeah, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Mm -hmm. If he, I, I, look, is self defense a great thing for the civilians? I think it's a very important and and the way to. Uh, to open your eyes what it is um, to protect yourself mm. it's important to put it in a, in, a, in a syllabus I think if you can put it in the syllabus it's great the self-defense stuff? yes but uh, I, I I know self-defense because I'm old school jiu-jitsu yeah. and I have to learn self-defense you know but uh, did I ever use self-defense? I never did mm. never but you use Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu saved my life a few times, but no self-defense. Okay. I think as well, self-defense is a lot to do with the person. The person have to have this ego to be a fighter, to be a already a, have the third eye to to um, to be read for occasions like that, you know. Uh, but um, yeah. 
Jiu-Jitsu to me was good enough to protect myself against a lot of a lot mm -hmm. of horrible things. You yeah. know, all these close contact and all the submissions, all the confidence. Yeah, it gave it to you. It's I think it's much more than self defense. You know, and I don't believe in self defense in the way like uh, I'm gonna do a cool self defense. I think there is dangerous to say that. Yeah. You don't do cool self-defense. You yeah. train in self-defense. You're constantly in the dojo. You know, you talk about Krav Maga. You talk about Japanese Jiu-Jitsu and, and different martial arts where you practice self-defense or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You practice self-defense every day. Mm. Uh, you know, going there, there's, there's to me, it's a bit risky here. You talk about uh, learn self defense because I see a lot of course I'm teaching you cool self defense for this person. Probably I'm wrong, I don't know. That's why I think, in my opinion, self defense you not learn the course, mm. self defense you practice every day, every day. Then you are specialized in self defense. Yeah, then I, I, I believe self defense is very good mm. if you practice, but I see a lot like a police. Oh yeah, no, it's terrible. I see a lot like uh, uh, they they do like a like five hours of yeah. self defense stuff, and then yeah. they get sent into the big bad world. To, madness! Yeah, they yeah. should have a, a, a list. They they, they, it, they it's crazy. Police, police officers, in my opinion, police officers that do beat work, you know, that walk the streets. Yes, they should be doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu once a week. Well, at least, yes, at uh, least uh, every I single have, one. Well, is I have a six police officers in my dojo. Yeah, is they are now. Six in coach, yes, I have another two. I mean, seven, yes, eight police officers. But I mean, it's yes, I believe in self defense yeah. if you practice. I see like a women self defense, just do one seminar. Women self defense, I think this is ridiculous, it's yeah. dangerous. Yeah, really think the women gonna defend the, uh, about the rape for one self defense yeah. course or yeah. gonna take someone's knife his hand or a gun or whatever it is yeah. it, I think I think it's very risky to do that yes I have offered you to introduce to the self defense to put you into your self defense practitioner yes I agree there I yeah. do a, a seminar here to to introduce you to self defense yes. that yeah. is different yeah. but no I'm teaching you self defense you 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 read for defend yourself. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe in no, this. No, no, no. <laughs> That's my view. <laughs> you know, but uh, I do think the ju ju uh, ju uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is so um, complex, mm. so good, so perfect that it's already in season self defense. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think because I use it. Yeah. I prove myself. The Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is. In see a self defense, yeah. you know, it's, that's what I think. Well, you know, that's why I asked you because, uh, and and that's uh, you know, I spoke to John Hegan a couple of weeks ago, and um, he uh, he worked in this young offenders, violent young offenders institute for fourteen years, yeah. where he was having to use his martial arts experience every single day yes. to restrain people. Uh -huh. So you can go and ask a martial arts, you know, self defense instructor who's never had to ever defend themselves against anything, what the fuck do you know? You know, what yeah. do you really yeah, know? But do you, it's all, th it's yes. all theory, you know? Yes. But someone who's worked the door, who's been attacked, stabbed, hit with baseball bats, yeah. had to control people, yeah. then you actually know what works. It's not all theory, it's actually practice. I, I'm telling you, Daniel, for these 14 years, if I didn't have a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so a, a number of fights we had to deal in, I have to fight because Jiu-Jitsu actually saved my life many times. But once I, you never need to use self defense because I was a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Yeah, you know. So it was the it was the sport the sport Jiu Jitsu the sport just saved my life, but not the uh, Gracie self defense stuff. You no. know, the, no. no, yeah, yeah. No, I don't, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think everybody has to, to know, to learn, because it's a particular position. Yeah. So Jiu-Jitsu is, is not going to be there. But uh, the self-defense, if you can do both, yes. Yeah. But practicing, 
not yeah. just learn one less or two lessons. Yeah, you know that. You know that is my theory. I think that uh, when you learn grappling, sport, sport jujitsu, if you want to call it that, but when you won't learn grappling, it's the fact that you're going every day against someone trying to yes. control you, and you're trying to control them. That yes. builds a confidence and an ability that and, is very useful. And it is is a is a it's a great thing. Is is if you if you're walking outside to a black belt jujitsu like a police officers or a doorman, you know how to control your strength. And you know yeah. how to control his strength yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Because come on top of you like a natter, what the first thing you're gonna do? Yeah. Glue if he like an anaconda, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. They take his back, they take it down, mount on top of him, yeah. come down, come down, relax. Miami here to help you. Now I'm your friend, you know. There's things like, like that. You know, sport sports jujitsu is the art and science of controlling someone. Yes. You know, and, 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 and what better for a self-defense situation? You don't want to have to punch someone in the face. You see all this stuff, you punch someone in the face, they die, you go to jail, all of that shit. If you can control someone yes. without having to do that, you don't need to it's punch, very powerful. You don't need to yeah. Yeah, it's so powerful. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so so uh, before I get onto some of my uh, my first attempted rapid fire questions, um, you know, you've, you've been in the UK, you've seen the growth of jiu-jitsu in the uk you know ha as someone who planted the first seed or was one of the seeds in the uk brazilian jiu-jitsu scene you know like yes. you said you came here and you're you wanted to start something in the uk and now you get to look at it you know we, we've got the uk bjj underground on facebook with fourteen thousand people on there there's academies popping up all the time with thousands and thousands of students in the uk doing it big yes. tournaments with thousands of people going to the british open and in yes, english right. and stuff like that how does that feel to see that and well to know that i feel it's here? growing very quick i'm very proud everybody all these schools been doing a wonderful job in the uk yeah. You know, these small, big organizations. And what it is, what I think in the future, we're going to kick, we're going to be the best country in the whole entire Europe. We're going to kick the asses there, boys. Yeah. You know, keep your work well. That's what we, we, we intend to do. And we keep it together. Let's go, uh, let's go stop a little bit about this political. Yeah, we respect each other, everybody different association flags. But we are, we are our brothers here. We are Jiu-Jitsu community. And I don't want just grow different in, in different personality or, or opinions for everybody. But I mean, I, I want everybody grow healthy and friendly environment with a lot of respect. Yeah. And that you understand we are the same. Yeah. You all are the same. We yeah. are one community, wonderful community. That's what it is. I love it, man. <laughs> I love it. And, and you know, uh, you kind of briefly touched on it then, but you 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 see that one day the UK being the best in Europe for jujitsu. A hundred percent. How are you growing now? We're doing the right path. Just we just have to keep it going. Yeah. You know. And what what else do you see for the future of jujitsu in the country? Uh, kind of with with the knowledge of the growth of it, how it's been over the last. That's why I want you to 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 see uh, we hitting the the, the community. Mm. We're gonna one day you're gonna hit every single community like we do in Brazil. The favelas. More, pe more people. Look in, in Brazil, all every single, nearly every single favela in Brazil. Take these kids, take these kids from the street, the trouble. And they learn jiu-jitsu and they, they grow up a young, decent man. Mm. That's what we want. One day we're going to hit there. Let's grow a little bit more. And one day we have to try to put things together and try to help these this lost kids out there mm. now. You know, we live in a first world country in the UK. It's different from Brazil. Different. They have a much more problems there. But uh, we, we do have a... a a community here, we don't know what they are. Yeah. They're still very much lost. Yeah. You know, that's all I want you to when they hit that. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, I, I agree with you. I think it's such a, you know, jujitsu, ju we see it as a sport and that's how it grows and that's how we love it. But I think it is so much more than just a sport and it can be yeah. such a, a tool for uh, social yes. and uh, and change within communities and yes. it could change people and, 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 and change people's lives. Um, and I think that that's a big thing, which is getting kids who, like you said, don't have father figures or yeah. don't have a place. You know, this is one of the appeal of gangs and stuff like that, yeah. is that they don't feel part of something. 
and everyone knows that when you go to a jiu-jitsu academy you are now part of something a lot bigger right. you know get get kids who are looking for something instead we, of them joining a gang try, joining a jiu-jitsu academy we academies. try to put it in Essex because in Essex have a lot of areas that is very poor um, I have a Java on my uh, brown belt he is one the guy try helping me the kids and it, he's a police officer as well mm. Been, been, a, been a copper for a long time as well. Very experienced senior copper. But he's, um, we try to put it in the schools there, and actually, the, I think it's just ridiculous the law here. Oh, yeah, that, that, yeah. You're not allowed to put in martial arts. It's very, in very school. hard. To, to, the, the bureaucracy in the UK is, you know, among some of the most in the you world. Know, it's we talk very hard about, to get we talk about a sport where you don't have no strike. Mm. Sport is absolutely. Uh, the first first thing to think is respect, yeah. you know, and uh, and they will be, mm. you know, and they don't let us put it in the schools because some roles I don't know what it is. I'm not very particular in the paperwork, but he knows. Yeah, and he read out oh, just paperwork. You try hit the three schools, yes, six very poor schools. Mm. You try teach them if no money a charge. It was just like a. To help them, to help the Muslim community as well, you know, and and nothing, nothing being uh, mm. being given to us. That's a shame, you know. It's frustrating because people are trying to do these good things for the community through jujitsu, and they're getting blocked by a bit of red tape. Yeah. So that's a shame. But hopefully, as uh, it, as the sport starts to grow and hopefully you know it's so hard for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to ever be mainstream because it's so when you watch it you know that's how something goes mainstream right and lots of people want to watch it yes. and it's hard to watch Jiu Jitsu if you don't know if you don't train Jiu Jitsu you don't understand Jiu Jitsu absolutely that's the thing they are it's blind about it they don't yes. know how good it is yeah. you know you see put your kid to start t- training now how it is now oh um, Daniel you don't have a clue the difference after three months yeah it's amazing. They change. They change even attitude in school as well. Teachers came to me in my door to say thank you mm. to help these kids. But uh, we cannot put it in the school. Yeah. Well, I think that's what we need to do is we need to try as, as a jiu-jitsu community to keep starting you know the uk bjj are doing yes. things trying to get it uh yes. sporting them recognized yeah and i've been important. i've been seeing uh, dicky martin been doing best what he can in uk bjj is a mm. great guy mm. you know i'm a very good friend of his uh and uh we is even even to our sport to be uh approved mm. we, we can't get approved because mm. you have to you have to so many signatures and yeah. you this dad is here, but it's too much going on. Yeah. You know, it's so simple. Okay, let's have a go. Let's have a trial for these guys. Give a try for these guys one year and see what it is. If it work well, if you don't, give, give us a chance, mm. right? Give us a chance. We prove it. I'm 100% we prove it to you. We're going to do a good job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what it is. 100%. Anyway, Alan, I'm going to hit you with some questions now. How's that? I'm going to hit you with some, with my, uh, my list of questions. What questions that the, the first time I'm going to ask oh, anyone yeah. hopefully one's uh, okay uh, who is the person who's influenced you most I want to know who's influenced you most in your life in general before we get more into jiu-jitsu specific if you had to name one person my father yeah uh, I think my father is a big example why I am not this very a good gentleman. Yeah. He, I never see him doing anything wrong in his life. Can't be that perfect. <laughs> You're a bit suspicious. Yes, because I'm a messy. Yeah. I'm a messy, man. I can be a quiet Brazilian. Yeah. And uh, where did this come from? From my mother? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> then, yes, my father is a big example of my life to be a real gentleman. To be a decent man, to be the best you can be. Mm, I like it. I like it. Uh, and now I want to know who is the biggest influence in your jujitsu career that isn't your main instructor. So your main instructor, who was Robert Ferreira da Silva. Yeah, who wasn't him? Who was the main influence in your jujitsu? Apart Very from simple, him? Mauricio Gomes. Mauricio, yeah. yes, he's a good friend of mine. I admire that guy, and um, uh, yeah, he he is a. He's my uh, big influence in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. After my teacher. How so? 
Just that you know, just that you did a lot of training with him, or nah, well, is 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 how I see the jujitsu was different aspects. Is and I worked on the knee and belly. Mm. You know, I, everybody's well know my knee and belly. My knee and belly is it's very good strong because very, of him. Because of him, yeah. Uh, the the way to think as well. He put all little details. The time he teach me, and I did realize. He opened my eyes. It's very de good details. All he knows and to see in your game. You know, he he opened my eyes different ways. Now my jujitsu is much better because he opened my eyes different. Wow, well, I think it's better to do this way. Yeah, and it's the, you know how it is. It's come for it's coming out. Let me talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's not a very crazy guy like me. I'm yeah. more crazy. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> well, let me talk to you. I think it's better to do this way. He's always he's, always chill. Yeah. Oh, chill, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, okay. So, if an alien race, if an right. alien species came to, to came to the planet Earth. Yeah. And they wanted you to tell them what jujitsu was by showing them one person. Okay, so one person who had to represent jujitsu. Yes. To someone who didn't know what it was, who would that person be? My uh, Roger Grace. It'll be Roger. Yeah, well, Roger is an alien. I don't think he's a human. <laughs> <laughs> what you talk about? I think he's a lizard. <laughs> Crazy! No one can beat that guy. So what is it about? Huh? What is it about Roger that represents what jujitsu is the most? Roger Grace is uh, a guy where he arrived and uh, is mush, never lost as a black belt, never got submit as a black belt. Yeah. Um, is is that it, it, it? That is it that it's almost the opposite. Like, uh, it's not that you, that Roger defines what jujitsu is, but Roger did define what jujitsu is. You know, like jujitsu is what jujitsu is because Roger was so undefeated. Therefore, that must be the now, perfect example. Now he's not there. I'm not saying because of there. Yeah. Because uh, he keep the real basic yeah. foundation jujitsu, and uh, we all the competitions with the foundation based jujitsu, and now all that he proved it to you. If you have a very very good foundation. You can be a good jiu-jitsu guy. Doesn't mean you need to modernize your jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But he proved it to you. The simplicity is the quality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yes. I think it's it, it's an important lesson that a lot of uh, new people coming into the sport they want to skip that foundation part. It's so important. To... Oh my word! This foundation is so important. And uh, I say to everybody in my academy, white belts or blue belts before pop, don't even go to the modern thing. Here, yeah. you have to get your foundation red and properly. Yeah, you know, make sure your judges is tight. You know, and your foundation absolutely perfect yeah. before you go for any any another kind of judges. Yeah, hundred percent. Right, yeah. Um, what is your single favorite thing about jujitsu? If you had the god, the god, the god. I think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You just control the purse, you can do whatever you want, you can make a guy try pass your guy like a puppet show. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's God is a beautiful thing. I think yeah. it's the most beautiful thing in how entire to the subject. Yeah, you know, I, I I do think that kind of the God position is the one thing that separated jiu-jitsu from all of the other grappling arts right so like judo and sambo yes. with all of all and wrestling yes. all of those things the aim was always to try and get the person on their back and then be dominant from the top position whereas jiu-jitsu with this whole you know with the whole the, the gracies were small and they had to use their size they couldn't use a size advantage so they had to kind of be efficient in their movement yeah. and that's where the guard position and i'm sure that there was a little bit of guard in judo and a little bit of stuff off your back in wrestling but the true development of that guard position where actually you're on your back and this is the the, the guard is so interesting from a you know a, a almost philosophical perspective about jiu-jitsu where you, you it, you're on your back but you're winning yes and and, and it's so hard for people to understand yes that that even even in MMA where you know you don't really want to be on your back but yes. there are some people with good jiu-jitsu where yes. Well, but the leg lock starts from there. Yeah, you know, they, they, they don't have a clue. They don't know you just yeah, travel, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, but, yeah. but anything, you know, if you you, if someone doesn't know anything, if someone has never watched an MMA fight before, and they see someone on their back and someone on top crazy, ready, right? and someone on top ready to punch, and you say, which one of those are in the better position? 
They're yes. always going to say the person on top. Yes. And that was the thing that really about jujitsu that I think is so alien and so strange to understand for someone yeah, until yeah. they experience it. A lot of moms, they, they see the kids fighting. The, they think the kids is winning the fight because the top. They're on top. So when they put the hands, the kids up, was it the knee? Yeah. They said, oh, don't use it. Don't use it. Like, oh, don't, madame. Uh, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that. It's a little bit more complex. It is an alien sport. Yeah? <laughs> Look, Roger Gray is an alien. He's a lizard, right? <laughs> Illuminati question here now, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know i think i think the god uh represents a lot more than what it just yeah. uh you know just the technical jiu-jitsu stuff there's a lot more to it so it's a good answer yeah. um so what is one thing if you had the power to change anything about jiu-jitsu what's the one thing that you would change and that that can be like a technical thing or that can be something about the culture behind it but you can change one thing about the sport what would it be i think break the taboos of the world mm. put one nation Mm. and uh, that's that's what I think is the most important yeah so you know uh, kind of you, you, you're alluding to it a lot earlier but the kind of politics stuff and yeah, just stop it's politics think everybody's a human being everybody wants to be happy that's why I want to be yeah everybody wants to see another people happy and want to be happy you know we 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 all the same here we are brothers. Again, when you die, you're going to be our energy. You know? And realize how silly you've been here. We are kids. We think you're grown up. No, you're not grown up. We are just kids. Try to think you're grown up. No, he is grown up. So stop this bullshit. Stop jealous. Stop take. And share. When more you share, more you have. Yeah. When more you see people smiling in the face, most as fast you're gonna see. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you, you talk about sharing, and it kind of reminds me something. There's, there's this whole thing, and I don't really know much about it because I haven't spent much time. You know, I've only spent a little bit of time training in Brazil. But someone who was training a lot in their in their early days of jujitsu, the whole uh, kind of not sharing all of your techniques. This is something that I've heard about, but is that is that a real thing where an instructor might not show their best stuff to their students because they want to be careful about. Uh, what I don't, I don't, I don't know why is the reason now. Probably before, yes, because you have to win competitions. Everything is in YouTube now. Mm. You can see so much in YouTube. You seminars. Before you should be allowed to all these seminars, people with different, different flags, seminar is the same flag. Mm. Now, the seminars go, everybody go everywhere. Doesn't matter what flags it is. So that's why I think is, is the, the you just improve, my opinion, this improvement. Yeah. You know? I think it's it's kind of you you're giving up your own personal success for the overall success of jiu-jitsu, right? No, your success is share. Yeah, yeah, okay. It is his success. Yeah, because you're sharing for him. Ah, all of a the world champion, and he said, "Oh God, don't even maybe market your publicize this." Yeah. I have a great appreciation that guy because he shared me there that thing and now I'm a world champion because of that thing and every time you're gonna see you're gonna shake your hand look at your eyes you made me didn't say thank you but look at your eyes thank you very much my man yeah that's a great thing about it yeah it's not about where you go it's about what he's in his heart people don't realize this what in your heart is more important than anything what is going on yeah alright yeah yeah. We've, we've just lost a video unfortunately I think my phone's died that's yeah. uh, embarrassing that's um, <laughs> uh, but we, we, we're still we're still going we're still yeah. going the audio's still going uh, if you could go back and say something to yourself as a white belt what would you tell them stop go wide or Alice <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop going wild oh, yeah <laughs> Uh, I think I may, I, we, we do mean it, it's a long journey. Yeah. We, we make a lot of mistakes, right? And uh, one of the biggest mistakes, I have uh, so many injuries because, uh, Jesus, I don't want you, I don't like to tap. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have an uh, example now. I've been the last five months, one of my brown belts uh, gave me a north south guillotine. Yeah. You know, you know he Thomas. Yeah, he's so strong that man. And he said, "I didn't tap. I wish tapped because of. Do you know when you don't tap? Like he's the guillotine. They like you're just hearing something. 
in yeah. the, oh, uh, let, so in the end I tap I wish tap earlier yeah then there then I'm, I'm not gonna have this neck in pain every every time I wake up in the morning <laughs> 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 so what why why say to everybody why belt or all this jujitsu journey trust me yeah tap yeah 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 yeah, it's Stop. Like, it's like, <laughs> I say this to the white belts though. They'll, they'll get caught in an armbar and they'll, um, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll just hold for a couple of seconds before they tap. Yes. Uh, there's no point. You're going to tap. Yes. You might as well tap before the arm is being cranked yes. a little bit. And they don't realize. They say, look, it's not going to hurt today. It's not going to hurt tomorrow. But in five years' time, you're going to wish that you uh-huh. tapped earlier. A hundred percent. Yeah, well, I can see now. All my both knees, sometimes yeah. I feel it. And they hit you more properly. You know, my low back, my neck, you know, we talk about 35 years, it's a long time. Yeah. It's just getting hammered every day, you know. And uh, luckily enough, I don't have a very serious um, mm. injuries. Well, you know, I, I guess that's another question that people would be really interested in is you've been training jiu-jitsu for such a long time. Do you have any advice for people who are, uh, you know, either they want to train for as long as you have or... Um, or they're getting on in age and, you know, they're starting to feel their body change. You always have to train smart. Make sure you tap and make sure if you are a striker, you just wait all the time attack. You need to be careful on your knees. Yeah. Because all the time you're pushing, go down, pushing, pushing, pushing. I know Aloy strikes a very good guard. And now they're both in this absolute hammer. Yeah. You know, you have to find out the way where you can consider it what the maximum level of your body is yeah. because you don't want the next 15 years complaining about your knees. You know, Wesley Epson, one of my black belts, absolutely wonderful. God, now you can't even train more because the both knees are absolutely mm. gone. And I think, I think I'm healthy now because I always never give a 110%, yeah. but always managing to be a good attack Mm. And good defender without give me give everything. Mm. So if you give everything, possibly you're not gonna get injury now. But in the in a, in a long longer journey, your body gonna fe- fit it, fit yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You're, Fatigue, you're gonna yeah, get yeah. gonna get stress. Yeah. So is 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 that is the problem about really careful how you train all the times. I feel a little bit pain. Stop. Yeah. Don't continue training pain. You mad? Yeah. Okay. Your body says something. No right there. Stop it straight away. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. You know, yesterday uh, I have two guys, two blue belts doing guard passing, and uh, they, you know, the guard pass was a bit too, too, too aggressive there. So guys, calm down, relax because you can get injured yourself. What happened? One left, it then limping. Yeah. You know, good do map before. Good stretch. If the pain come in your body, stop training. Okay, find out. Don't go back training until you sort out the pain. Some people keep it training with the pain. This is not going to resolve the problem. You mm-hmm. have to disinflammate the, the area first. You stop the pain first before you go back to training. Yeah. Your body has to heal first. You gotta be you gotta be smart. You have to be smart. You can't be just you if you want to train technique, it's different. But don't roll. Mm-hmm. You know, roll is much more impact, but you have to keep it. Keep it smart. Really mm. train, train smart. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then kind of finally, we've almost done two hours now. Uh, wow. It goes, it goes, see the time pass. It goes very fast, man. Wow. But uh, I really, really enjoyed chatting to you. Sort of uh, what are you doing now and where where can people find out about you and all of that stuff? They want to come train with you or whatever. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere in the face. Everybody can contact me on Facebook. And uh, I have other different websites as well. Uh, Al Sikera. BJJ.com. Okay, so. okay, I'll put the links up. Island Sakara BJJ.com. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Put the you links do up. My, my number or 079. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't give me your number. That's, well, that's I what. don't know. Do I ever be here before? <laughs> you can, I don't know. Do you I? Can, it says a lot about you how, <laughs> yeah. tr- how trusting you are to give people your mobile number. I, I'm a slag, right? Your jitsu slag. <laughs> 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 that's all right uh, but yeah yeah, we'll get you on that and uh, Instagram or Facebook or uh, Twitter yeah, I'll be everywhere that. okay be yeah everywhere. I'll, put, I'll put all the links all in the description so <laughs> anyway. and, uh, and uh, if you really if you really want I'll give him your phone number as well <laughs> oh that's, I really really appreciate you chatting Thanks to me so uh, just before we go any last words you want to say to, to, to the audience or anything like that the people listening uh, yeah uh, thank you very much you 
to listen to me, you know, and uh, um, if uh, you have any questions or if you want to see me, just come to see. And uh, uh, if you're a BJJ guy, please, let's be together. We are all brothers and, and we are one nation here, one nation of the BJJ. That's why we're strong for uh, BJJ nation. Yeah. That's what you are. I love My it. Love. Yes. I love it. I love it. That's an awesome attitude to have and I couldn't agree anymore. Yeah. Oz, I really appreciate it. Uh, I had a blast. That was really, really enjoyable <laughs> and uh, hopefully maybe we'll get to do it again sometime. Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, brother. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Oh, that was nice. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I totally <laughs> So that is all, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, if you want to uh, find out more about Arlen, you can visit his website, which is arlensequeirabjj.com. Uh, you can also check him out on Instagram. He's just at Arlen Sequeira. Uh If you want to contact the podcast, then you can send me an email at podcast at raspberryape.com. Uh, otherwise, you can follow me on Instagram at raspberry underscore ape, Twitter on raspberry underscore ape, or on Facebook. Um, what else? Oh, uh, yeah, YouTube channel. You can watch this podcast or watch other stuff that I do on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash raspberry ape. And uh, you can also check out my website now, which has stuff on there like these podcast episodes and some cool rash guards and t-shirts and patches to buy you can buy a, you can buy a raspberry ape podcast patch at raspberryape.com uh cool guys if you like this episode then please feel free to leave me a review on itunes or more importantly share this this podcast around go tell your friends and pass it on the people because uh i don't know the more people who listen to it the better for well i want to say like the better for jujitsu and you know just after after that podcast with Arlen's I feel like by sharing my podcast you're contributing to the the brotherhood and the spreading of love and joy of jiu-jitsu but the reality is it probably just just makes me feel better about myself <laughs> for whatever reason um yeah that that's it I'll see, I'll see you guys next time take it easy